All right, good day, guys. Today, what we're doing is we're talking about foreshortening. Foreshortening is super important. It really makes your figure drawings really pop out. They're essential for, um, or foreshortening is essential for, for making your, your figures look right. Um, you want to make your, your figures look exciting, make them look like they're real, look like they're actually occupying space, and, and this is the way to do it. Um, so this is, this is foreshortening. Foreshortening is basically a form of perspective, but it's a form of perspective on like individual parts of the body, not necessarily the entire body. All right. So for instance, if you have, um, let's say you have an arm, got an arm and it's going straight out. Something like this. Right? We've got a fist or something like that on the end. Um, what happens with foreshortening is that as, let's say we're, we're going to make this, this, uh, this, this fist kind of swing around so that it's at a right hand angle. As it gets closer to the camera, it's not going to go down, right? This, if we were to put our fist down like this, it would just look like it, the fist is going down, right? He's making like an L-shaped um, stance. We don't want that. We want this fist to look like it's coming right at us. So what happens is this, as it goes around, it's kind of like on an arc, just like our range of motion video that we watched a while ago. The arc is kind of like this because it's occupying three-dimensional space. So as it gets closer, it actually appears to get smaller. This line here will get shorter and shorter and shorter as it gets closer. The other thing is that this fist is also going to get larger because it's getting closer to you, right? So if my hand is down here, the closer it gets, the bigger it gets, right? Um, that's the same. So even if my this pencil here, camera, you'll notice that there's a down here, the the point or the the nub is is quite small, and this point here is getting quite a bit larger the closer you get to it, right? So if I keep going closer and closer and closer, it's going to get more and more extreme. Now, this is a long pencil. That's how long it is, but as I make it come right towards the camera, it gets shorter. It looks like it's shorter, right? This isn't that long anymore. It's only like that long, whereas it's ordinarily this long. So that is the same with limbs, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. So it gets bigger and shorter. That's the big part. If you can get that in your head, you'll be fine. Um, so that's, that's the core of what foreshortening is. Now, the other thing is that as we kind of touched on this with our perspective video, as our arm comes along around, let's just get this back the way we had it. Essentially we can, if we put like a bunch of rings around our arm like this, pretend that these lines are going all the way around okay so this is this is a three-dimensional object that's going all the way around our our arm as this arm moves so let's say it's starting to maybe the whole arm is getting closer to us like it's swinging around not just the at the elbow but the entire arm so this is going to get a little bit bigger Something like that. So these are getting shorter. The bones are getting shorter. But the circles, the joints, are getting larger. As we go along, you'll notice that the circles are going to start to curve. That's because our arms are essentially cylinders. Right? So all these, these markers here 
they're going to start to look rounder. And you'll also notice that these are getting closer together as well. So or at first they were about this far apart, right? Something like that. Now they're getting shorter. Right? They're quite close together and larger, right? This fist is still getting quite large. If we go so that it's basically like right on top, this is, you can get it to the point where you actually don't even see much of the bones, you just see the joints. And this is gonna be a very large fist. All right, so then our, our circles are gonna end up being very close together. Does that make sense? So again, the closer something gets to you, the bigger it gets and the shorter it gets. Think of it like this. The fist and the arm and stuff are hiding the other parts of the arm, right? So again, if we use our pencil as an example, our, we only see the, the end of the, the pencil right now. If essentially what's happening is that the top of the pencil is hiding everything underneath it. So if we put it all the way down like that, it's the same thing. You can only see so much of it. That's, that's, that's the basics of, of what um, foreshortening is all about. Now, you can do this with, with any part of the body, right? So sometimes it's a good idea to use these rings um, to kind of get a good idea of where, um, how close things need to get. So if we have, um, say, a, um, let's say we have Spider-Man, we used Spider-Man as an example um, a while ago, and let's say he is swinging through the air. We want to make it look like his one arm here, let's put an arm here, and he's, he's kind of web slinging through the city or something. This, this hand is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, where this hand here is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, because the opposite is true as well. The further something gets away from you, the smaller it's going to get, right? So if this is Spider-Man, he's got his webs whatever, something like that. And this hand is getting quite large, right? The hand is bigger than his head. And say we have a leg going out like this, and the other leg is coming right at us as well. Let's say it's something like that. He's swinging, kind of kicking at us or something like that, I don't know. So let's say this is his whole foot. So quite large, it's coming right at our face. Okay, so we can again use these, um, the rings. These are gonna be going away from us. This one's gonna be coming towards us. This leg here is basically um, level with, um, with the rest of the body. So we're, it's gonna be basically flat on there. This one might have a little bit of arcing on the, on the thigh, not much. This leg, however, is gonna be getting bigger and bigger the closer it gets to us, right? You could do the same with the body as well if you want. Put some eyes on them. Neck looks a little broken, that's okay. And there you have a really basic Spider-Man in with foreshortening. And if we wanted to get really crazy, we could even make the web look like it's coming right at us. All right, so this web could be going and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Because it's getting closer and closer and closer, right? 
this web going the other way. So that's the basics of foreshortening. Um, it's an, an extreme example, and often the extreme examples are the most useful. Um, let's turn the page here. Foreshortening can also be um, less extreme as well. Okay, so you don't necessarily have the have to have the um, um, the foot or the the hand directly in front of your face. You can also have it um, like just curved, right? So let's do an example of hmm. in the booklet that I handed out to you guys. There's a picture of Batman. Let's just redraw that. So it looks something like this. This is this is just a basic rendering of, of what was going on. So this knee here is getting quite short, right? But getting close to the body or close to the camera. This leg down here is regular, right? He's running, but it's it's more straight down. This one's coming up. So this knee is really close. It's probably one of the closest things to the entire camera. And this foot has to recede. Right? So it's gonna be a big knee, little foot. Same with this arm. This arm is basically going straight out but it is going slightly forward when it's going down here. And he's got, it's kind of running sort of funny like that. This arm, however, is going much more towards the, the viewer. And I think his head is a little bit too hot, tall, so I'm gonna move that down. He's kind of hunched over. So in order to make it look like he's hunched over, we can just kind of bring the, the head down into the body a little bit. Think of it like this. Instead of having him standing up straight, he's more, think of it like perspective again, right? So he, the, instead of having it like this, he's in a, he's in a cube. It's going down like this. So we're seeing less of the bottom of him, less of his neck and stuff, more of what's on top. But again, everything is getting compressed because it's foreshortened. It's getting shorter. This is longer than this, but it's the same size. Okay, and then we'll get the hand in there. The hand's gonna be quite large. Okay, so then we can get the flesh on. And think of these as, instead of just connecting the dots, think of them as cylinders that are now connecting, right? So this is cylinders coming towards us. It's gonna be getting a little bigger as it gets closer to us because it's extended towards us. Now it's gonna be, it takes a long time to kind of get good at this because your wrist naturally gets smaller closer it gets to the hand, right? So you kind of got to balance the, the difference between foreshortening and actually just physically getting smaller. So just keep that in mind. So this, this leg here, we don't see much of it. It's all being foreshortened. So you've got that. Good. Let's flood his arm here. Erase the parts that we don't need. Okay. Let's 
He's got a big muscle for his shoulder. Big muscle there. Biceps here. If you want a good source for anatomy and muscles, look up Imagine Effects Anatomy PDF on Google, and you'll get some really great um, resources there. Uh, it's all totally free, and there's just a really, really good um, site for how to draw all the muscles of the body. It's really, really helpful. Just needs to get bigger. It's got a big muscle here. some of these parts of the hand there. Hands are hard. Don't worry about if it about it if it's uh, doesn't quite look the way you want it to look. I'm gonna put his cool utility belts. Not gonna spend much time on it. Just gonna get stuff in. Again, you won't, don't necessarily want every single muscle to be bulging because that's not how muscles work. You, you see all these, you know, like the Hulk and stuff, and they're always like every single muscle is flexed. That's impossible. In order for one muscle to flex, another muscle has to relax. So when you, when you bend your arm in like this, this muscle flexes, this muscle back here relaxes. The opposite is true here. When you extend your arm, the muscle underneath flexes and the bicep uh, relaxes. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to have every single muscle bulging. Though it is fun to draw like that. All right, so we've got a pretty, pretty not bad Batman here. Make sure we get part of his mask in. I'm not going to worry about shading this one. Put the bat on. Do anything, just kind of the boots and the gloves and the bat, and that's probably good enough. Make sure you get his cape in. You can put his cape however you want. It's usually a good idea to kind of do some sort of like S curve like that, and then have it kind of go on out like that. That's good enough. So that's a really, really basic form of short foreshortening, right? So we have it's not super extreme, but there is this leg is shorter than this leg, right? from there to there, and from there to there. But it looks like he's running. So that's that's what we're, the illusion that we're trying to create. Um, we're trying to make it look the way things would look. We could also, like if we wanted to do, try this without foreshortening, right? It might look something like this. This is with no foreshortening at all. Right, it looks dorky, right? It looks really dumb. Um, it doesn't look right at all. What we wanna try and do is move things around, start to see things differently so that you can kind of imagine where things need to go. Making things bigger and shorter so that they look like they're coming at you. This can also be super extreme, right? So another example is I have a Superman in your booklet. So here's your head. 
and we don't see his feet at all, right? Because he's coming right at you. This fist is coming right at you. Um, so that's what she can do as well, is having like this really extreme version of what foreshortening can be. This is his fist. Flying off behind him. So you don't even see his legs at all, right? And his fist, this fist right here, takes up, you know, half of his entire body, right? Ordinarily, your fist isn't that big. Um, but because we have this really dynamic image, it makes it look like it's like he's coming and he's gonna he's gonna fly right through you. Um, so yeah, that's that's foreshortening. Um, Practice it, practice it, practice it. Um, this is really important stuff. Um, this is the most important lesson since actually learning how to draw the figure. So this is the good stuff.